Hi, Professor Baldwin here, and today we're going to talk about the algebra of functions. All this means is if we have two functions, f and g, what we do in order to add them, subtract them, multiply them, or divide them. So these are the rules that you're going to use for all of those algebraic functions. Let's look at an example. We're given two functions, f of x and g of x, and we're asked to find each of the following. First, we need to find f plus g of 5. And to do that, we're going to find f of 5, and we're going to add that to g of 5. So f of 5, we substitute in 5 for our function f. That'll give us 5 squared minus 3. And we're going to add this to g of 5, so substituting 5 in for x into our function g, which is 2 times 5 plus 1. Now we simplify. 5 squared is 25, so 25 minus 3 plus 2 times 5, 10, plus 1. 25 minus 3 is 22, plus 10 is 32, plus 1. This equals 33. So f plus g of 5 equals 33. Now what if we are dividing f and g? So here we have function f divided by function g evaluated for negative 1 half. Well, you're going to find f of negative 1 half, and you're going to find g of negative 1 half, and you're going to divide them. f of negative 1 half would be negative 1 half squared minus 3, and g of negative 1 half would be 2 times negative 1 half plus 1. Simplify the numerator. Negative 1 half squared is 1 fourth minus 3. Simplify the denominator. 2 times negative 1 half is negative 1 plus 1. Okay, simplify the numerator again. 1 fourth minus 3 is negative 2 and 3 fourths. But the denominator, negative 1 plus 1, is 0. Remember, you can't have 0 in the denominator of a fraction. That's undefined. So our answer for f divided by g of negative 1 half is that it does not exist. Now, finding the domain of these different functions. A little bit of language here. If f and g are functions, then the domain of adding them, subtracting them, or multiplying them is anything that the two domains have in common, the intersection of those domains. And the domain when you divide the functions is also the intersection of those domains, so what they have in common, excluding anything that makes g of x, the denominator, 0, right? The denominator can never be 0. So for this example, first we're going to find the domain of all of these different functions and pairs of functions. So let's make a table. First, we're going to find the domain of f. Well, if you look at the function f, it's a fraction, and the only value for x that wouldn't be valid would be one that makes the denominator 0, and there that would be the value of negative 1. So the domain is going to be anything but negative 1. Now the function g, the same thing. It's a fraction, so the only value for the domain that won't be included is anything that makes that denominator 0, which in this case is an x of 6. So negative infinity through 6, or 6 through infinity. This is excluding that value of 6. Now, what about the sum of those two? Remember the rule above, anything that is in the intersection of the two domains being added together. So you're combining these two, two domains. And if there's something that isn't included, it's not included in the sum. So negative 1 and 6 won't be included. So the domain, when we're adding 
the functions is going to go from negative infinity to negative 1. Then it's going to go from negative 1 to 6, and then from 6 to positive infinity. Right? We have to exclude those two values that were excluded in the individual functions. It'll be the same for f minus g and f times g. Those will be the exact same domains. The only time it'll be a little different is f divided by g and g divided by f. So f divided by g. Remember that this is going to be anything that is included in the intersection of the domains except for something that makes g of x zero. Well, this function g of x will never be zero. And for the second, g divided by f, the function f of x, the denominator, can never be zero. Because both of those functions, f and g, have numerators that have a value in them. So our interval is going to be from negative infinity to negative 1, or negative 1 to 6, and from 6 to positive infinity. So the only values we have to exclude for both of these is negative 1 and 6. Now part b wants us to find these functions. So it wants us to find f plus g of x. And remember, what we have to do to find f plus g of x is we have to take the function f of x and we have to add the function g of x. And it's not asking us to get a common denominator and simplify, so this is good enough. And then f minus g of x, same thing. You write the function f of x and then you subtract the function g of x. Now, what if we're multiplying? f times g of x. Well, that's the function f of x times the function g of x. And here it's easy to simplify. The numerator, you multiply together, and the denominator is x plus 1 times 6 minus x. Then we have f divided by g of x, well that is 4 over x plus 1 over 1 over 6 minus x. Remember that's the same as keeping the numerator and multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator. And I didn't give myself enough room. That would be 4 times 6 minus x over x plus 1. Let me squeeze in the last function, g divided by f of x. That is equal to the function g of x divided by the function f of x. And again, you're going to take the numerator and multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator, which is x plus 1 over 4 times 6 minus x. Now, why is this important? This is important because it builds us up to the difference quotient, which is extremely important in calculus to help us calculate the average rate of change of a line segment that's connecting two points on a nonlinear function. So it's to help us find the rate of change. And that is done by using this difference quotient. So remember what it means to find f of x plus h. That means take the given function and wherever you have x, you replace it with x plus h. So f of x plus h for this given function is going to be 3 times x plus h minus 5. We just replaced x with x plus h. Now we need to distribute that 3 
to get 3x plus 3h minus 5. Now we have a simplified version of f of x plus h, so we're going to combine all of it. f of x plus h minus the given function f of x and divide it all by h. So take our simplified f of x plus h, which is 3x plus 3h minus 5. Subtract that f of x, put it in parentheses so that we can distribute that subtraction sign and divide by h. Now distribute that subtraction. So 3x plus 3h minus 5 and we get minus 3x plus 5, and this is divided by h. Now we need to simplify this numerator, and notice that we have a positive 3x and a negative 3x. Those will simplify out. Then we also have this negative 5 and this positive 5 that simplify out. So we get 3h divided by h, and those h's simplify to 1, so the difference quotient for this function simplifies to 3. Once again, this is a lot of material and content covered in a short video, so if you have any questions or a specific problem you want help with, reach out to me. Leave it in the comments, email it to me, and I'll get it in one of my videos for you.